أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول النبي الكريم أما بعد وبشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأخذة من لساني يفقه قولي So today we'll be focusing on the topic of uh, hasad, which is envy or jealousy. Again, just as a recap as to why we started off with this book, the topic was diseases of the heart. And one by one, when we um, study or we discuss all of these diseases of the heart in detail, after we're done with it, we're supposed to analyze whether we are um, curing ourselves of these diseases. Like for example, if it's about arrogance or if it's, jealousy or any other greed or uh, any kind of distraction that takes us either away from Allah SWT or makes us sinful, we're supposed to analyze as to am I doing my best to purify myself? Because usually what we think becoming closer to Allah or becoming more religious is the outer appearance. We feel that, oh, if I put on the hijab, I'm going to be religious. Or if I, uh, you know, pray, uh, if I pray extra or if I fast extra and if people are aware that I'm doing this, then we think that we look religious. But in reality, that when we do these outwardly actions, it, of course, can fall into the category of Riyah, but also it becomes a means to impressing people around us and not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas the inner characteristics like the purity of the heart, keeping the heart clean, all of this, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see us, right? Only he knows what's inside us. And the person who actually works on that has more ikhlas and more sincerity than somebody who just works on their outer appearance as to looking as religious or practicing, but then ignoring the inside. And that's why the two main characteristics that are um, going to get people into paradise are taqwa and husn al That is being conscious of Allah and good character. So... <clears throat> constantly working on our inner selves to purify ourselves one by one so that we are living with a clean heart because what happens is if we are um just a second let me see. if we do not get rid of the diseases of the heart no matter what outward actions you're doing there are chances that those actions are not going to be accepted for example in today's topic when we speak about hasad or jealousy um, the hadith that I posted on the flyer, beware of envy or beware of jealousy as it consumes your good deeds just like uh, fire consumes wood. So imagine if you are praying extra and fasting on Mondays and Thursdays and doing whatever extra ibadah that you want to do. But if you have jealousy, then all of those deeds are wiped off. And similarly, many other uh, characteristics which we possess instead, for example, arrogance or anger or something that we say. So there are chances that when we do these bad deeds, what happens is we are wiping off our good deeds and it's like starting all over again. Uh, okay, now let me just open the page where I'm supposed to start. Okay, so let's start the topic. So what is jealousy? It's one of the most negative emotions that a man may have towards his fellow being. So when we, when we speak about jealousy, what it actually means is that you wish for the downfall of others. Or that if you get news that um, something bad has happened to someone, you feel delighted about it. Basically, you're delighted at the failure of others or you wish for the failure of others or you wish for the downfall of others. This is um, the actual meaning of what jealousy actually is. So it's in, in some cases, it could be that you want to possess what others have. But you don't wish for their downfall. But when you actually wish something evil for the other, and that's how even people catch the evil eye, right? So jealousy is a sinful sense which occurs when a person lacks another's superior quality, achievement, or possession, and either desires or wishes that the other should not have it. So it's a negative trait in one's character. Um, it is termed as hasad in Arabic. Instills a... Um, it's a type of emotion that instills in destructive thought, fear, insecurity, anxiety, and totally the negative feelings that one can think of. It is referred to as a combination of different emotions, which may be anger, inadequacy, disgust, resentment, helplessness. It can be seen in uh, people of every age. Okay. So if when we think about jealousy, the first question is, why would somebody feel jealous of another person? <clears throat> okay, let me make it a little more interactive. Uh, let me go back to the screen. 
So what do you think are the causes of jealousy? You can type it in the chat session if you have any points in mind. And if we think about it, the first sin that uh, was actually committed is jealousy, right? Because when um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Iblis to bow down before Adam alayhi salam, and he refused to bow down. And it was out of two traits. One was um, jealousy and the other was arrogance. So if you see the, the, this trait of jealousy is more common in people who also are arrogant. So arrogance and jealousy are somewhat hand in hand. So if a person, ha and why does that happen? What is the connection? Like if a person is arrogant, what, is, what does that mean? He thinks that he is superior to another person, right? He thinks that um, I inherently, you just think that I am better than somebody else. So Allah is more pleased with me than with somebody else, or I am more superior than others in certain aspects, right? So now when you see that someone else has something better than you or is better off than you or is you know successful in whatever um, may be of concern to you, then now you start the... the Shaitan creeps in this this trait of jealousy because now uh, it's like your ego has come into the picture. So whenever you feel that, uh, yeah, I'm reading the comments that you're giving. So yes, it is wealth. Maybe some maybe some people are jealous of somebody else having more wealth, or uh, some people are jealous, urge for more dissatisfaction. Yeah. So what happens is jealousy leads to dissatisfaction because now you are jealous of somebody or you are. Um, you know, not happy with what somebody else has, that will create discontentment in yourself. And you know, jealousy is something that can even that can even reduce your lifespan. Why? Because it causes stress. It causes these negative grudges and emotions. And um, you know, we spoke about in medicine of the prophet. So Allah so when we did the series about medicine of the prophet, we discussed about how stress, anxiety, and depression, and all of these can actually even impact your health. Like. Uh, all these, um, you know, diseases like heart diseases and diabetes and all of these things, even cancer now, they have a lot of connection with stress. So if we actually live our lives engrossed in the dunya without caring about our akhirah, without having a relationship with Allah, we're not just harming our, we're not just harming our akhirah, but we're actually even destroying our own health. We are actually destroying our own health by, uh, you know, harboring all these ill feelings and these negative characteristics and that's why this session of the skia or purification of the heart has to be done literally year on a yearly basis because uh, if, if, you if you have a long gap if you haven't seek any knowledge of the religion you're busy with your dunya and then you don't have these reminders you can actually get sucked in to all of the chaos of the world and you get end up neglecting and until it's too late and then you realize that i didn't work on myself if i had worked on my own health and th this has a big connection with your uh, mental well-being as well as your physical well-being because our bodies are affected by the stress that we take and the cure for all of this is having a relationship with Allah building our taqwa and only when we have taqwa can we get rid of all these diseases of you know jealousy hatred having grudges if we don't forgive one another so a person who um, is unforgiving who's always angry who's always um, you know jealous this person is harboring so many negative feelings together and at some point this person is going to be victim to the consequences of all these actions okay uh, the other thing was um okay i think that part will come into the solution so i don't want to go into that right now um Okay, the next spiral, usually jealousy occurs among people who know each other. It happens among siblings, between members of the family, people of the same profession and age. Uh, it is one of the oldest evils of human beings, which no doctor has found a cure to. And there's a verse in the Quran in Surah Al-Isra. Do you see this one whom you have honored above me? If you give me respite, to the day of judgment, I shall surely bring his descendants under my sway, all but a few. Okay, this is a verse where uh, when Adam, when Iblis was asked to bow down before Adam alayhi salam and he rejected, so this is what he said. What was the reason of his jealousy? That he felt that Adam alayhi salam has been given more honor. And that was a result of his arrogance and his jealousy. And that downfall led him not just out of paradise, but um, till eternity, he is doomed. And that's how 
that's how shaitan was shaitan right because of these evil qualities so if we possess these qualities and it's something which we need to teach our kids because what happens is even at a young age siblings develop jealousy with one another or young kids have a jealousy towards other friends that oh she has this and i don't have it and she has that and i don't have it so we need to train our kids um about being satisfied with what they have and not looking at others and this is one of my points in the solutions of how do we get rid of this trait is by looking at those below you and not above you and that's a, a recommendation of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he recommended us that look at those who are below you so that you will feel satisfied and there's always always people who are, who have less than you so once we even teach our kids to look at the other side of the world where you are enjoying luxury and you have food and you have a roof over your head just show them the kids that are suffering in syria or in other parts of the world where there is war going on and how they're living their lives as refugees they don't have even the basic necessities of life so at, at a young age when you teach kids this they automatically develop this attitude of gratitude towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whereas if we keep on visiting people who have more or if we keep on having friendships with those who are above us and it will not just affect you but it will affect your kids very badly drastically and it will always create kids that are ungrateful not just to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but also to their parents so one is trying to take out the greed of materialistic things in our kids and also making them grateful to Allah and showing them that there are people in the world that don't enjoy the same luxury as them um uh, and uh, that's that's actually the key to happiness if you go to see when we when we speak about happiness there's nothing such as 100% happiness in the dunya as believers we know that this life is a test so you are never going to be 100% happy ever there's always going to be ups and downs what we can say is yes you can be content in this dunya and that contentment only comes when you have a relationship with allah when you are satisfied with what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and when you are um uh, just a second when you are satisfied with what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and when you have um this uh, this idea that this life is not supposed to be perfect we are not supposed to have everything perfect in this life there will be deficiencies and the other thing that i want to mention is usually this trait of jealousy comes in when we um look at somebody having more than you right for example you go outside to a party you visit somebody's house and you see some good things that you maybe you would feel jealous of right but then um when you just sorry there's so much of distractions yeah so when we see these people that they look happy on the outside they don't express their um the bad sides or the hardships that people face nobody goes on social media and puts up uh, the the sad parts of their life they always put up the happy parts of their life so even when, when somebody else is looking at this from the from the other end they think that oh wow look they're having so much fun they're enjoying their life they have everything but we'll, you don't know what's behind the screen you don't know what misery is going on behind and everybody has their own set of struggles when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has distributed his blessings he knows whom to give what and whom to deprive of what so being jealous is not actually the solution to say for example a person is jealous of somebody else is that going to make his condition any better in fact it's going to be worse because he's going to have the consequences of it in his own health and he's not going to gain something by being jealous right and the other point is that the person who is jealous is actually um not directly but indirectly saying that Allah is giving something to someone that the person doesn't deserve like literally um, it's an attitude where you feel like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just when he's distributing his blessings right i should have had this why does he have it so it's denying the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's denying the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon yourself by feeling ungrateful and by feeling that oh you know this distribution of blessings is not um you know just and the other way to avoid this is by knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-karim and he is the owner he is the richest of all right he is the owner of everything he is the owner of all blessings so why can't we make dua that oh Allah grant me the same instead of being jealous when you look at a person that's why we always say barakallahu fi we always say tabarakallah mashallah tabarakallah why do we say this so that Allah protects their blessings so when you see something good in somebody else because what happens is the the, the topic of uh, envy the topic of envy leads to actually evil eye 
right? And when a person is sh showing off their blessings, they are, they can be a victim to the evil eye. And so when a person likes something, we don't just say, MashaAllah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, but we also say, Tabarakallah, which means that may there be barakah in what Allah has given you, right? So when we say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, or Barakallah, or Fiki, or anything, something, like, or even if you just say it in English, wow, may Allah bless you, I like this, or your child is beautiful, or your um, house is beautiful, or you have this nice car, or whatever it could be, or even if it's something related to the deen, that, oh, well, MashaAllah, you are, you are a hafiz of the Quran, or whatever it could be. So whatever blessing you see in somebody else that you like, you always say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, which means that whatever Allah willed that happen, and may Allah bless you, or may Allah grant you more. So this protects the person who's uh, being looked at from the evil eye. And the other point on a side note is about not showing off your blessings. That's another point. Like try to keep your blessings to yourself in order to avoid the destruction of your blessings because the evil eye can take a person to the grave. That's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The evil eye is real. It's another hadith. So um, if you want to actually protect your blessings, one way is to be grateful to Allah because Allah says that who, um, the one who is grateful, I will give him more. And the other way is not to show it off, not to brag about it, and not even to unnecessarily share it for no reason, just to, you know, show somebody that, oh, look what I have. Because, and uh, subhanAllah, if you think about it, maybe that's the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind actually keeping this evil eye, right? At the end of it, it's all in Allah's control, right? So why did Allah allow the evil eye to hit people? So that people control themselves from bragging and from boasting about what they have. Like, for example, if there was no evil eye, then even the religious ones would not hesitate before posting whatever they've accomplished in life or whatever they have of the blessings in life. But because of the fact that the evil eye exists, maybe it will control people from bragging and boasting. And so in, in, in return, the other people who don't have those blessings do not feel deprived. So there's wisdom behind whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has um, created. Uh, in the hadith, beware of jealousy for verily it destroys good deeds the way fire destroys wood. And that is why you may think that we... Um, are doing good deeds and you know we are making it a jannah but what if when you come on the day of judgment you realize that all of these things that you did or uh, whatever you did for the sake of Allah SWT, all of that got wiped away because of these evil traits that we possess um, according to one of the writers here Bertrand Russell he says jealousy was one of the most strong causes of unhappiness not only is a jealous person rendered unhappy by his envy, but they also wish to inflict misfortune on others. Um, jealous, uh, jealous persons live in constant state of being sad and dejected. It ruins one's character before it is built on ethics and principles. Imam al-Ghazali, he said that jealousy is often caused by various acts like hatred, ambition, superiority, arrogance, astonishment, craving for power and prestige. Whether it is money, power, fame, or lust, all material things are finite. It is for this reason people generally get jealous by each other. Uh, a jealous person is annoyed because of the blessings other people have got. He is angry with Allah's way of distributing bounties to individuals. Allah, through his absolute wisdom, has given some people more prosperity, more children, more intelligence, beauty, and strength than others. The believing Muslim should be pleased with what Allah has destined for him. Uh, let me see what else is here. A hadith where the Prophet wasallam said that do not be jealous of one another, do not boycott one another, do not hate one another, do not contrive against each other. Be all of you brothers to each other. Uh, also the dua um, for protection. So this is one of the duas where we can uh, protect ourselves from you know the evil eye of others. And also, right? In that, the surah ends with Hasidin is a Hasad. That may, uh, may Allah protect me. I mean, the the I seek refuge uh, from the envier when he envies. So the fact that these duas exist and the fact that the Prophet sallallahu has told us about this that means Hasad, envy, evil eye, all of these um, characteristics they do exist, and that's why we have these duas to protect ourselves from all of this. Especially the morning, evening Afkar, it comes under that. Then there's another hadith. 
When the Prophet sallallahu was asked who are the best of people, he replied by saying the one with a clean heart and a truthful tongue. Um, then the, they replied by saying, we understand a truthful tongue, but what does a clean heart mean? So he answered sallallahu alayhi wasallam by saying that it is the heart of the one that is pious, pure and free of sin, transgressions, hatred and hasan. And again, I want to repeat the hadith where the Prophet, where, um, the, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam described a man from Jannah. And um, there was another sahaba who said that, one of the sahabi who said that, uh, I want to know who this man is. So he goes to his house, he lives for three days and he sees that he does not do anything extraordinary of salah or fasting or tahajjud or anything of that sort. So he wonders, what is it that this man does that takes him to Jannah? And so we're leaving. He asks that companion, I didn't see you doing anything extraordinary. So what is, and the Prophet had said that you are going to, you are one of the people of Jannah. So what is it that you do? What is the secret of you being um, you know, guaranteed Jannah? And so he said, I don't do anything special, but there's something special that I do before I go to bed every night. And what was that? That I clean my heart and I forgive everybody before I sleep. I'm just paraphrasing the whole hadith. I don't have it right now in front of me, but it just came to my mind. So I'm just paraphrasing it. So basically what he, the answer that he gives is that before I sleep, I don't hold any grudges against people. I have a clean heart. I clean my heart before I sleep. And that's something that we all should be doing every single night if you want to succeed in the akhirah and if you want to live a healthy, productive life in the dunya. It's going to benefit you in both worlds. So when we, before we go to bed, think about what wrong did I do? See, And you will end up falling into mistakes and all of these things. But the key is that we seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we go to bed, always. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself, in, in, in spite of not um, you know, falling into all of these sins, even though he was the messenger of Allah, he still used to seek forgiveness more than 70 or 100 times a day. So imagine what we should be doing as uh, you know, ordinary slaves of Allah. What should our condition be when it comes to istighfar? How much more should we be engaged in istighfar? And the second thing is forgiving people. If we don't have this attitude of letting go and forgiving people, we are never ever going to um, succeed in anything in life. Like, for example, if somebody hurt you or said something bad to you or did something wrong to you, if we are going to hold up a grudge against them, even if you may say that you forgive them, but if that grudge is still there in your heart, that means your heart is still not completely clean. It's not yet purified because you have that grudge against that person. And one of the teachers, they said that don't let anyone ever go to hellfire because of you not forgiving them. You know, don't let anybody be punished in the hereafter because of you, because you did not forgive them in the dunya. And of course, the the biggest motivation is that we forgive others and overlook their faults and mistakes so that Allah forgives us and overlooks our faults, right? We are more in need of Allah's mercy than somebody else needs our forgiveness, right? So when we forgive, uh, if you have mercy on those on earth, then Allah SWT will have mercy on you. So we are more in need of Allah SWT's forgiveness and mercy. So if we want that, then we should also be giving that to others. We should be forgiving everybody who is around us. And that's how relationships can survive. Because if everybody holds a grudge and if everybody wants to get angry and not forgive the other person, how will any relationship you know, survive um, in this dunya? Like be it between um, families or friends or spouses or siblings or in-laws, whatever it could be. If somebody did something bad to you, said something bad to you, if we don't let go of it and if we don't, you know, it, it shouldn't be like you have said that you've forgiven and then you still are cold with that person. It has to be like, you know what, I don't care. It's over. It was the past and let's move on. That's how the attitude should be. It should be like it never even happened. Even though the shaitan will make you remember it and keep a grudge in your heart against it, it's your job to work on it and to let go of it. That's real forgiveness. That's true forgiveness. And that in that way, you're benefiting yourself by keeping all of these negative traits out of your system, out of your soul and your physical body. The next... Uh, I'll check what is left. Do not look at those above you. Look at those below you as it will make, as it will more likely remind you of Allah's favors bestowed upon you. Uh, the other point that just came to my mind is about um, one of the ways if you want to check whether you are, whether you do possess this quality of jealousy is check if you backbite about someone or others. That's one of the ways where we may not be aware you may not be aware that you're jealous of someone, but if you find that you speak ill about somebody behind their back, it is one, it could be because of the jealousy factor that is there. Because you want to put down that person in front of others or whoever you may be concerned with talking to. So, For example, you're speaking and you speak badly about a friend of yours or um, 
any anybody else that you're backbiting or there's a group that is backbiting about someone, it's more likely because of this hidden trait of jealousy that is there inside them. And so they feel that by speaking ill about this person, they can put down this person and elevate themselves. But in reality, that doesn't really happen. But one of the reasons that people backbite is also it's connected to envy. Um, which is the case where jealousy is permissible? So jealousy is not acceptable except in respect of two persons. One, whom Allah has blessed with the recitation of the Quran and he remains engaged in it day and night. And the other, on whom Allah has bestowed wealth and who gives it away through the night and day. So these are the only cases where it's uh, permissible in the sense that you don't actually wish for the downfall of those people, but rather you wish that you could be like them or have it. Like for example, if you see somebody who's um, a half of the Quran and you would love to do the same, right? So that is not really the negative type of jealousy. That's something that would motivate you to do the same. Or you would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you with that. Okay, now let me see. Now this part is done. Uh, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, there has come to you the disease of the nations before you. Jealousy and hatred. This is the shaver, meaning the destroyer. I do not say that it shaves hair but it shaves or destroys the faith. By the one in whose hand is my soul, you will not enter paradise until you believe. And you will not believe until you love one another. Shall I not tell you of that which will strengthen love between you? Spread the greeting of salams amongst yourselves. Now, if you think about it, um, you know, just saying salam to another Muslim is a great act of virtue. And why? Because when you give salam, you're actually giving dua to that person. When you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, what are you saying is you're saying that may Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be upon you, right? We're actually uh, making dua for that person. So that automatically will bring love. And that is only if we're conscious of what we're speaking and the meaning of what we're saying and you know, doing it sincerely to give the other person dua. <clears throat> So this is one of the ways in which grudges and hatred can be removed is by spreading salams amongst one another with sincerity, like with the intention that you're actually giving dua to that person. Some of the causes, I'm just scrolling through this next page. It could be a repetition, so I'm just scrolling through it. Pride. Uh, in Arabic, pride is termed as kibr. A person suffering from unchecked ego or pride cannot handle the success and the blessings of another person and he falls a victim of hasad or ego. Uh, envy is a great trap of shaitan. This is just some of the sayings of scholars. Enmity. Enmity caused by deep-seated feelings of anger, revenge, or something unsettled. The heart can lead to jealousy. A viciousness of nature. A person sometimes gives into his nafs ammara or submits to the commands of the devil, which in turn makes him a carrier of hasad. The envious man holds a grudge in his heart for the person being envied. Just a second, this one. Next page and is afraid that he shall be inflicted with some pain or punishment. As a result of fear, he envies the status, post, or stature which the mashhud enjoys and wants him to be stripped of his position. Um, there was another point that came to my mind. Yeah. So this trait of envy, again, it's, it comes from shaitan because shaitan is the one who actually whispers uh, and tries to, uh, you know, bring these ill feelings in our heart. And what happens is one thing leads to another. So it's anger, jealousy, arrogance, hatred, and we, all of these things are coming in together. And this person is sick now, the person's heart becomes sick, and then it also affects the person physically. So now physically the person is whatever, depressed or sad or whatever it could happen. And this will now lead to the unproductivity of this person. So now this person is not going to be enjoying his or her work, whatever it could be, be it at home, be it if you're earning a living or if you're doing something for the community or if you're just a mother at home raising kids, it's going to affect all of this. So what happens? By making one person suffer from all these diseases, the shaitan is actually destroying the contribution of this person to society. And that's how shaitan works. One by one at a time. If he cannot get you into zina, if he cannot get you into alcohol, if he cannot get you into shirk, then this is how he's going to destroy society by destroying the, either the mother of the home or the father of the home by getting people involved into all of these ills and all, all of these evils. And as a result, the productivity of this person is affected. So this person is now not going to contribute as much to make a successful society. And that is what shaitan is. He's the enemy of mankind. So that's how it leads to the downfall of nations because of this. We see today nations are fighting with one another because of what? Because of greed, envy, hatred, jealousy, anger. All of these things are the consequences of what? Um, 
happens when we submit to the whispers of shaitan. So it is our job as human beings that we fight these desires and work on our nafs and on our soul. <clears throat> Three signs of a hasil. He's a backbiter at the back of people. He's a flatterer in front of people. And he is happy when a misfortune befalls people. So that's all I have for now. If you have any questions, we can discuss that. We will end this session, inshallah. If we want to become like, oh, salam. just a second, I just want to read this question and yeah. I'll get back to you. If we yes. want to become like someone in worldly affairs, is this jealousy? For example, copying a senior teacher or a pattern of education. No, that's what I mentioned, the two cases which are permissible, uh, where the Prophet he was the example of someone who is half of the Quran and he is in, engaged in the Quran night and day. And the second one was the one who has given wealth and he is spending it in charity. So now these are good qualities. And if you want to be like that, that's not jealousy. Wishing the downfall and the wishing for the blessing to be snatched away from that person, that is what is hasad. That you, it hurts you when you see someone more having more than you. So when, if, for example, you come across um, a teacher or anybody that you look up to and you admire that person and you want to be like that person. So you, you, you say, mashallah, tabarakallah, you make dua for that person, either secretly or open, you just make dua for that person. And then you work towards becoming like that person. So that's a form of motivation. And that's why that's not considered as jealousy. So admiring someone or admiring someone's house or car or children or whatever success they have, admiring is not jealousy, but wishing the downfall of those people or wishing that they did not have it or just feeling ill about it or feeling bad that why do they have it that falls under jealousy you can go ahead sister with your question uh, yes that's a, that was my question i thought you did not read it in the chat so I was... oh okay sorry no i was on the other page i just got to the screen right now oh, many questions are yeah. coming in my mind but uh, maybe yeah, i you don't can ask them okay I mean, about the jealousy, it's, it's like uh, Allah gave us some uh, inbuilt kind of qualities. I mean, and jealousy is one of them. Everybody is having it. So there must be something we can, uh, like something to control it. Uh, I mean, some... yeah. So um, there are a lot of du'as that we can make. Uh, there is one that I had over here. Let me check if I have it. I have it. Oh, one second. I have a link for the solution so i didn't do that so jazakallah for asking the question okay so the first solution is one is being grateful to allah when we see when we when we speak about feelings of anger like see for example anger right anger is something that allah has created in all of us it's there within all of us even the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got angry now the question is how do we express it and on a side note the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never got angry for himself he always got angry in terms of the deen Okay, with regards to the deen. But the question is, how did he express that anger? For example, a person is getting angry. Allah mentions, right, in one of the verses in the Quran, those who swallow their anger and forgive people, right? So swallowing that anger and fight, that's the whole purpose of our life, that these tests, either with good or with evil, will come your way. But our job is that we work on our nafs to control them. And you may not always have control over them. So when we do lose control, we seek forgiveness. We ask Allah to forgive us. But when we know that we are, like for example, somebody is reminding us. Like right now, all of us are reminded through this reminder. So what do we do? What's the solution? Yes, we may have jealousy. We may have anger. We may have arrogance. But uh, there are people who actually pride themselves over having arrogance. Now that is where you are sinful or wrong. Because now you are not, like for example, yeah, I am angry. Allah made me that way. And if we don't work on it, and that's where we are faulty. Not that we possess it, because there are so many people who possess so many negative traits. Like some people are lazy in their salah. But if a person has the attitude that I want to improve myself, so I will work hard in improving my salah. Or for example, a sister who doesn't wear hijab. Now if she says that, oh, I don't believe hijab is far, then that's where she's wrong. Because now she is falling into kufr by rejecting the command or by rejecting the belief in the command of Allah. But if she says that, you know, I know that hijab is fard, but I am weak and I'm struggling to do it. But one day, inshallah, I will do it. Or may Allah make it easy for me. So when it comes to the, these inner qualities, it's the same. So for example, if a person does have anger, jealousy, and these will be there to some extent in people. So the key is that one, we are concerned and we ask Allah to protect us from these qualities. And two, when we feel 
that I am getting jealous or I am going to get angry or I am, you know, being arrogant at this moment. Immediately say, "Audo billahi min ash-shaytan rajim." Immediately seek refuge. This is one of the solutions, also that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave us when we are uh, in a in a situation that makes us angry. So we immediately seek refuge in Allah, and we do the following. What is it? One, be grateful to Allah for the blessings that He has given us. Two, know that this life is a test. We cannot have it all. You have certain blessings that someone else may not enjoy. And some other person has blessings that you don't have. But at the same time, that person has their own set of struggles and we have our own set of struggles. So we have to leave it to Allah. The, our key, our job is that to see that Allah is pleased with us no matter what situation he puts us in. The third um, point is uh, pray to Allah to be distanced from jealousy. So one of, you can make du'as to Allah that Allah protect me from anger, jealous. Like imagine if every single day, how many times, and I want everyone to be honest with themselves, how many times do we actually make dua? Imagine if every day you sat and said, Ya Allah, just in, forget the Arabic, just in your own words. Ya Allah, protect me from anger, hatred, jealousy, arrogance, uh, backbiting, all of these traits, right? So imagine lying. So imagine if every single day you made this dua, that Allah protect me from this, 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 this. Do you think Allah will not protect you if we actually go forward and make that dua? He will, right? Because now you're asking Allah to protect you from it. So you will see the difference in your life during that phase. But sometimes we get into ghafla, we get into negligence, we end up falling into backbiting, we end up, you know, into all of these sins because we have distanced ourselves from Allah. So it's like, you know, the waves of Iman going up and down. So when, And it, there are, it is a fact that your Iman will go down and you will end up falling into these sins. But then the best of the people are those who repent, those who turn back to Allah. Then the fourth point here mentions seeking refuge in Allah. The fifth point mentions holding yourself from anger. Uh, the sixth point is suppressing your ego. Jealousy is affected by the ego. We think that we are higher than somebody else. Thus, we feel that we deserve better. Who are we to judge? Because the only one, the only one holds the right to judge is only Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay. So again, all just basically working on all of these. Actually, this is not the page I was looking for. There was another page that I had where. Have the solution though. Let me see if I can just get that. Okay, anyway, till I'm looking for it, you can um, ask your questions, inshallah, if you want. Also, uh, you know, the jealousy of um, one of the points mentioned here is of the spouse towards the other spouse in terms of ghira. Like, for example, a man is jealous of another man looking at his wife or talking to his wife or whatever. So this is a encouraged form of jealousy. I mean, this is a good form of jealousy because this is called ghira. This is not the negative jealousy. This is the protective jealousy. So if a spouse is jealous of um, somebody, you know, whatever, looking at their spouse or, you know, um, flirting with their spouse or whatever. So that form of jealousy is different. That is, that is a, that's called the protective form of jealousy, which is the ghira. And this is something that is encouraged for every person to possess. Even having, um, you know, jealousy towards the deen, for example, and what this, what I, I'll explain what this means. For example, there is shirk being committed. And that bothers you and annoys you to the fact that these people are worshipping another uh, being or another deity or whatever it is, instead of Allah. Right. This is this is the this is the, this should be the strongest ghira a Muslim possesses. The strongest ghira that you should possess is that when you see people giving um, anyone other than Allah the rights that Allah should be given, then that is a good form of jealousy because this shows your level of iman and this shows how strong your tawheed is. That you get annoyed and you're affected and you feel pathetic at the fact that people worship someone other than Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's the highest form. Right? And then comes the protective jealousy towards your family where you don't want men to look at the women or you don't want your women to look at other men and those kind of things. Okay, any more questions? What you have to Okay, so I didn't understand the part. Okay.
okay, you can type the rest of your question. Uh, there's one more question coming up by sister, so we'll wait for her to type it and then we will close the session. Sure. I didn't understand the last part. Which part? Uh, regarding the Rira issue? Okay, I have a hadith. Uh, you can type your question till then I, I remember the hadith that I had in one of my notes. I'm just going to open that right now and explain the point. I hope I find it. Uh, there was a hadith about. I just want to know the Sahabi's name. Okay, I'm going to read this paragraph that I have uh, regarding protective jealousy of a man towards his wife or females in his family. Sa'ad ibn Ubada, a companion of the Prophet wasallam, said that if I saw a man with my wife, I would strike him with the blade of my sword. This news reached Allah's Messenger wasallam, who then said, you people are astonished at Sa'ad's ghira. By Allah, I have more ghira than he. And Allah has more ghira than I. And because of Allah's ghira, he has made unlawful, shameful deeds and sins done in open and in secret. So it is the nature of a man to feel concerned and envied when he sees the honor of his family at stake. This form of protective jealousy, where did it go? This form of protective jealousy is allowed in Islam and is actually an inborn quality in men on account of being delegated the role of protectors of the family by the divine. Here is um, the authentic hadith of the permissibility of this ghira. Asma ibn Abu Bakr radiallahu um, anha narrates that when Azubair married me, he had neither land nor wealth nor a slave. So Asma had to do all of the household stuff. And I used to carry on my head, she says, the date stones from the land of Azubair, which Allah's messenger had endowed him. And it was a distance of two miles from Medina. One day as I was carrying the date stones upon my head, I happened to meet Allah's messenger along with a group of his companions. He called me and told the camel to sit down so that uh, he could make me right behind him. I felt shy to go with the men and I remembered as Zubair and his ghira. And he was a man of, and he was a man having the most ghira. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understood my shyness and left. I came to Az-Zubair and said, the messenger of Allah met me and I was carrying date stones upon my head and there was with him a group of his companions. He told the camel to kneel so that I could mount it, but I felt shy and I remembered your ghira. So basically, I hope you, I hope you guys understood the hadith. So Asma declined the offer made by the Prophet Sallallahu Upon this, Az-Zubair said, By Allah, the thought of you carrying date stones upon your head is more severe a burden on me than you riding with him. So <clears throat> you can actually find this hadith and go back and, you know, read the explanation of it. So what this type of, it's called jealousy in English. Okay, and this is something that the West looks at as a negative trait, right? For example, if there are spouses and um, there is uh, uh, an issue where, uh, say, for example, a man looks at somebody's wife and, you know, the, you know, they show it in the movies, like where the wife says, oh, you're jealous and you shouldn't be jealous. Don't be over possessive about your wives. Don't be over possessive about your girls. Or, you know, when actually people are even today, when girls are looking out for spouses and no, 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 don't marry him. He's too possessive. You know, they call this rira possessiveness. And it's a natural fitra that Allah has actually put more so in men where they are more possessive about their women, like their wives. They don't want other men to look at them or they don't want their wives to have relationships or friendships with other men of the opposite gender. So this form of this is again what shaitan has done is he's made this look as a negative trait. So now people, when they look at spouses, they don't want somebody who has this, um, you know, possessive attitude that, oh, no, he's too possessive. Don't marry him. You make your life hell. He's too He'll put you in hijab all day. He'll keep you behind the doors all day. So this something which is positive, a, a good quality that is actually necessary to have a sound family, to uh, raise upright children. This good quality now is, has become into something negative for the West. So I hope this makes it clear as to what um, the sister's question was. If you didn't understand, I hope these examples make it clear. But yeah, keep so we will end the session here. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ustazah, jazakillah khair. Wa iyaki.